Hello, hello, hello. Happy Tuesday, everybody. This is your girl, Crystal Jordan with Let's Get Crystal Clear. And I'm coming back with another interview today because we are all at home. We are all quarantined, trying to stay safe. But number one, I had something amazing to talk about, which is the Clark sisters. And number two, one of my good friends, um, a historian, has some great information I want to share with you guys. And number three, I just want to hang out with you all again today because, like I said, we're all at home. And we want to make sure that we're giving people things to think about that are inspirational and not always you know, negative and, and just give your mind a break. So that's what this is all about today. Episode of Let's Get Crystal Clear all about the Clark sisters, the first ladies of gospel. So right now I'm going to bring my uh, guest on for today. He is uh, African-American historian, Eric Majette. Welcome to Let's Get Crystal Clear. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Fantastic. <laughs> well, I wanted to start out by saying we wanted to do something to give people a break from the monotony that's going on. Talk about something that's actually positive. Right. What is positive is 2.7 million, million people mm -hmm. watched on Saturday. The Clark, the Clark Sisters, First Ladies of Gospel on Lifetime, um, executive produced by... Uh, Mary J. Blige, Queen Latifah, and Missy Elliott, and several other executive producers. The biggest, biggest movie of 2020 so yeah. far. Can we give some? So we give some applause for that. Yes, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and the thing I love about it is Lifetime's biggest release since 2016, which <laughs> proves that positivity does work. Absolutely. Right. I was just, you know, I understand they have, they've had some other things go really well with things that are more scandalous and salacious, but I love the fact that this is a positive, this is a positive true story. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, we're celebrating our icons while we have them and 2.7 million people watch. So that is a huge accomplishment in so many ways. Shouts out to those icons that help bring it to, to, to screen. Correct. Yeah, definitely. So what did you think? Because Eric, I know you, you know, we go way back. And as I mentioned, you're an African-American historian. You have just so much content from our history. Um, we were looking to do this with the um, Madam C.J. Walker story. We'll have to go back and, and, and do that so that people get that information. But what, did, what was the first thing that you thought when you heard that they were doing this, uh, this biopic on the Clark sisters? I, to be honest with you, I was wondering how forthcoming it was going to be right um, to right. be completely honest okay um, that was the first thing i was wondering i was just like okay uh knowing the church folks and um you know how we can be and mm -hmm. how guarded and protected you know um we right. can be I, I wasn't sure how much truth was going to be revealed if you will right. okay well in that same vein how do you think it how do you think it, it paired up to your initial uh thoughts about it do you think that they were very forthcoming they were very forthcoming um it was as forthcoming as can be expected okay okay yeah. I, I i was very very pleased with the um with the uh film it, it was great it was it great was, it was really it was great it, it covered the only thing i would have said i wish it could have been a little bit longer, longer. exactly that was my only critique my uh, that that we got a chance to know a little bit more of each sister's um, personal struggle and mm -hmm. life, but it would, but understanding that it was a made for TV movie, it was great. I will say the acting was on point. The acting yeah. was amazing, in my opinion. Definitely, I agree. I yeah. Definitely agree. So, so let's get into it because we talked a little bit about both. I grew up um, in uh, as Pentecostal. Um, and I definitely could relate to having a mother that was not playing no games <laughs> and I actually had to wear dresses all the time. So when I saw, you know, her mother, the mother, uh, mm -hmm. get angry when the daughter came to the door in pants, I, I could definitely relate to that. Can you speak a little bit about just that experience and how um the 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 religion at that time and, and even still now there are some people that are still practicing that was you know it was just very strict mm -hmm. well um the the church of god in christ uh was born out of which was very interesting it came out of the baptist tradition mm -hmm. um bishop mason actually um was a baptist minister right and, um, then you know of course you know they converted and created their own denomination um the restrictions of the Kojic church were massive. Right. Um, I have cousins that grew up in um, 
Pentecostal and also Church of God of Christ, um, that I was really shocked once I was old enough to understand. I was really shocked at all the restrictions. You know, they couldn't go to the roller skating ring, couldn't go to the movie theater, couldn't wear, um, you know, pants, uh, couldn't wear. Yeah, no makeup. Yeah. <laughs> so I was really shocked growing up because, you know, it went from my cousins, could, you know, we could go out and we could go to the, um, you know, to the movie theater or to the, um, the roller skating ring. And then at one point, you know, they were just like, oh, we can't do that. I'm just like, what do you mean? Yeah. You know, yeah. So that, that kind of was um, different, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so from that perspective, it had a lot of restrictions, but it also had... Um, Faith wise for our people, it um, it allowed a lot of um, release, if you would, spiritually. Right. right. Um, you know, it was very expressive. Um, you know, it's, it, it's not like we're having an audience that doesn't completely understand. So okay. <laughs> oh, no, definitely, definitely understand. I was so so I wanted to talk a little bit about what you know about the sisters because like I knew about the Clark sisters as mm-hmm. far as just the music, right? But I didn't I definitely did not know that all that was going. I mean, we wouldn't know back then. Back then we didn't have, you know, Instagram and Twitter and Facebook right. keeping us, you know, up to date on everyone's personal lives. Mm-hmm. So to see some of the struggles with the sisters, um, Definitely Nisi, you know, had her own, you know, uh, issues going on. And then I was wondering, did she ever, you know, did she ever come back and reunite with the sisters? Did she ever sing with them again? We didn't see that happen. Can you speak a little bit to that? Uh, no, they, they, they haven't done any shows together since, you know, they officially broke up. Okay. Um, Karen has said that they have, um, in, in an interview earlier this week, she said that they've reconciled um, personally. Okay. But um, there has not been any um, reuniting of the sisters uh, since they broke up. Since they broke up. Now, I know there was some uh, talk about if Nisi was reached out to to mm-hmm. be a part of the production, mm-hmm. um, if she did have, because, you know, people were asking, was it colored a certain way to make her look bad or so what do you know as far as if she was involved, were all the sisters involved in the production? Did they all sign off on that? No. Um, unfortunately, Nisi was not included. Okay. Um, she, her input was not included. Okay. Uh, it was said that, um, well, once everybody found out about the, um, the movie coming, mm-hmm. there was an interview with a, um, a gentleman here in Atlanta, Larry Reed, that did an interview with uh, Nisi. Okay. And, um, it was very, very um, uh, insightful, we'll say. Okay. okay. And um, it had a lot of information and she disclosed that she did not, you know, nobody reached out to her. Um, she had reached out to other people to try to figure it out um, mm-hmm. what was going on because her input wasn't included. Right. So well, I, with, her, with her not being, with her being no longer an official Clark sister, mm-hmm. they probably didn't need her to sign off on anything because otherwise we've heard with other documentaries or biopics that sometimes can hold people up if they need to get someone else's approval. So Mm -hmm. I'm kind of glad they were able to go ahead and do it, you know, and I think every family, it was very believable to me. Every family goes through that, especially with that many girls. I had a brother and my brother and I, you know, have issues. So with all those sisters, of course, there's going to be a lot of uh, conflicts and personality. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to ask you as a guy, because one of the things that stood out to me, there were several things that stood out um the mother relationship with the father initially mm-hmm. um and when she realized that you know he was he was not supporting her she was trying to she basically had a dream and she was yeah. dedicated to that dream for herself yeah. and for her daughters mm-hmm. it didn't include you know her husband um and he felt very left out and was not supportive what what's your perspective on just is that something that they you think could be worked out? Do you think he was being unreasonable or do you think they just, you know, as a man, he just felt like he should have been, you know, her focus? Right. Um, that was the focus for, for a lot of relationships back in that time period. Um, the male was the breadwinner. He was the head of household. Mm-hmm. Dr. Maddie Moss Clark was a genius, a beast. She was ahead of her time. Yeah. She was a forerunner when it came to... Um, I don't want to. I don't want it to be. I don't want it to be said out of context. But she was a forerunner when it came to being a business person in the Church of God in Christ. Right. Right. Um, one of the, the the literally pioneers. Um, she literally was doing it since the fifties, mm-hmm. and that's one thing that uh, I kind of wish 
it was a little segmented a little bit differently. I, um, even though it was a Clark sister story, right. um, people did not know that the mother, Maddie Moss Clark, was the Clark sister story. Um, she shaped them from children all the way up, but there was a lot of history that uh, a lot of people missed. So I kind of wished it was like a, a two or three part miniseries where they started with. About, can you talk a little bit about her history? Because we know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She was a director that kind of hid her yeah. own, uh, kind of put her own success in the past to focus on her daughter. So you can talk a little bit about her history and music. Okay. Dr. Mighty Moss Clark was amazing. She was one of, like I said, the forerunners out of the Church of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. um, she was the choir mistress of the planet. <laughs> um, she, Her choirs, um, you had the Southwest Michigan uh, Choir, which she recorded uh, with. Mm -hmm. um, she actually had uh, one of the first recording contracts, one of the first major recording contracts that came out of Kojic, and that was with Savoy Records. Mm -hmm. um, I actually um, was good friends with the black producer, the first black producer over um, Savoy before he passed away. We actually worked on um, a documentary together okay. on his history with it. And um, that was amazing. And he went over the story of how he had to go through, what he had to go through to sign Matty Moss Clark. Wow. Um, he had to go through the bishops to actually get uh, permission for her to be able to record. Oh, wow. Um, like literally had to go through like the line of succession. And then actually he said he recalled going to, um, going to Memphis to talk with Bishop C.H. Mason and get approval. Just to get her to be able to sign because of her connection in the church? Yeah, she was the um, she was the international uh, chairperson for the music ministry right. for the Church of God in Christ. So she had a national or international um, role right. in the church. Right. And that was um, fairly rare for women to have, you know, such a high power role. Mm -hmm. And um, that was one of the issues that you saw in the movie where um, it almost became as a clash because of you know, the, the role that she had, but also it, because of the popularity, she kind of, it, it seemed like an incited, um, some jealousy amongst the ministers where they told her, you know, she was being too big. You know, that conversation they said did not happen, but it was representative of things that were happening for sure. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so that actual scene where she goes in and the guy and the men are like, you cannot, that is not actually mm -hmm. on records as a, to mm -hmm. have happened, correct? Right. Well, they did do, they actually called her in front of everybody, but they said that she didn't, you know, talk back to the bishops and stuff like that. Right. So that was more so um, her spirit, you know. Her spirit was that way. <laughs> but um, being the woman that she was, she did not, um, you know, confront the, the bishops and everything like that. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Well, I know you got some goodies to share with us today. Mm -hmm. You always do. <laughs> I'm seeing your artifacts because you have so much that you've been able to get in this amazing collection um, that you have. Can you share with us what you have from uh, about the Clark sisters? Yes. I only, I only pulled out a few pieces because I couldn't <laughs> find the rest of them. The, everything is all like um, the few signed stuff that I have of them is in um, I'm in the process of doing the um, picture book that I told you about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So those pictures and stuff are um, in that set of way, but I brought out some of the original albums. Okay. So this is they're bringing it back to bringing it back home. I can't even see which way. <laughs> there we go. That, yeah. it back home album. Okay. Uh, so that's one, this one on here, you had um, my redeemer liveth. Um, so much what he's done is my living in vain. You know, a lot of the hits on that one. Mm -hmm. And you had heart and soul. And I, you know, what I loved about the movie is they actually, when I looked at went and looked at the album, they tried the the costume designer did an amazing oh, job. Point. Of having yeah, having the costumes yes. just yeah. like they did on the album covers. They did, mm -hmm. they did a great job. Yeah, they really did. Um, it was very well thought out, very well uh, put together. Mm -hmm. um, like we said, with the exception of. Um, the last part of it was kind of rushed because they packed a lot in, in the last 30 minutes. Okay. Explain yeah. a little bit. Cause we talked about that history. That timeline might've been a little bit mm -hmm. off. Well, and the timeline for the sake of the movie was off, um, for them to be able to get a lot in and cover, um, some of the early stuff that their mother did with the cultivation of the group. Okay. So in, um, in 63, Karen would have been under eight. 
she, you know, she would have been about six. I can't even remember uh, off the top of my head. But yeah, Karen was a lot younger during that time period. But in the movie, she appeared as a grown person. But you know, it was to be able to pack all that stuff in uh, mm-hmm. to be able to get a um, pretty comprehensive story uh, across. Right, right. What about the um, the 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 issue with Nisi? And do, do you know if that? scene actually happened where she came to the funeral was was she estranged from the family when you know, they were estranged they were estranged but she was on program that's the one part that was um you know kind of left out mm-hmm. and, um you know probably for more drama they right. made it seem like she just popped up right uh, that wasn't the case right <laughs> that wasn't the case and uh, also she was married at the time okay and so a lot of people didn't see that part they just you know kind of had the well it's she was but yeah. it was seven kids. We don't know where. It was much was. earlier on that okay. she got married. Okay. So it was kind of left out and that was kind of part of the drama. And that was the only thing. It was a little, in my opinion, it was a little tainted um, against Nisi, but okay. it was fair at the same time where it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like a malicious bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but because they didn't cover enough time period, they didn't get to show the, um, I guess, the full depth of Nisi's character. Right. And, um, her son and, you know, other interviews and stuff, you know, they did say that, you know, she was a good sister. She wasn't always the, um, you know, the the nemesis or, you know, that type of character. That There's was a scene there where she says that the other sisters say that it's hard to love yeah. her. She says it's mm-hmm. never been hard for me to love you guys mm. because you're my sister. So I think, you I know. I thought it was very thoughtful. I right. thought it gave um, a nice complexity to her character, mm-hmm. even though they weren't able to give enough time to show, um, you know, the depth or even her point of view. Right. Um, I thought that was a, a good touch to include. Um, I, I thought it was thoughtful. Right. Was, yeah. Absolutely. What do you think about just there? It was, I think this is, is great for me, and I think even for our culture, um, to go back and acknowledge for Mary J. Blige, Queen Latifah, Miss Elliot, you know, these are icons Mm -hmm. that all are so diverse and have had such an impact on music today. For them to go back and acknowledge the Clark sisters, a gospel group, Mm -hmm. um, as as inspiration and motivation for them. Like, you know, this is who I look to. Mm -hmm. And I have never heard harmony like that. Like yeah, they <laughs> have been like, working from the beginning, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and that also stemmed from their mother. Their mother was groundbreaking. She actually put out um if there were two people in gospel music that put out some well, it was really three, um, mm-hmm. that put out the top singers or top stars in gospel. Mm-hmm. It was Albertina Walker, Maddie Moss Clark, and James Cleveland. Those were the three. Right. Um, Natty Moss Clark was responsible for putting more Kojic singers on the map and on, in recording than any other person in history. Mm. So I didn't know. So she produced other singers besides just her daughters. Oh gosh! Out of her, out of her, um, Southwest Michigan, you had Rosemary Remsen, you had um, Vanessa Bell Armstrong, oh. um, even even Tamela Mann was in that whole bunch as well. Mm. You know um, that were under her tutelage. You had um, oh my. God, Thomas Whitfield, um, you name it, like literally that whole Detroit sound, that whole Detroit crew, everybody came through um, Maddie Moss Clark. Wow. She was the the, the Kojic star maker. Right. right. <laughs> also James Moore. There, there's a bunch of more names that are, are bouncing around in my head, but those are the ones that mostly people would really know. Mm-hmm. Um, but she was responsible for literally cultivating so many voices, so many soloists, so many um, groups, the Winans, you know, everybody has passed through that's in Detroit has passed through Manny Moss Clark. Wow. Yeah. And I don't, they, they weren't able to really show that because it was more right. about the sisters. It was more about the sisters. Right. Yeah. So that, was the thing that I was saying would have been great to have a three part series. The first part on their mother, mm-hmm. you know, because that's really the basis of, because the kids were there also. Right. You know, that right. was part of their story as well. But their story is so um, much intertwined with their mother's story mm-hmm. that most people didn't understand. And right. I saw a lot of comments afterwards that were just saying this. I, I'm more I learned more about Maddie Moss Clark than I did about the Clark sisters. And I was just like, no, you learned about the Clark sisters because Maddie Moss Clark was the Clark sister. Right. Right. So just said Shirley Murdoch mm-hmm. um, as, as, as yeah. well. Yes. 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 Yep. 
Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's all of those things. Like she, she touched a lot of people. Yeah. And then from there, of course, a lot of people were touched by her through their, through her daughters. Mm -hmm. You know, that was an extension of her legacy. Right. So that's one of the major things that people um, didn't necessarily know that right. their mother was the driving force behind them, but she was a beast <laughs> in the business. Also, what people don't understand, mm -hmm. you know, she was in the business a long time. So by the time she came along with her daughters, mm -hmm. she already knew the industry. She knew how mm, wicked and wretched the <laughs> industry was. You that know? industry could be wicked, wicked and right. It can be, and even to this day, it's that way. Absolutely. I to ask you, and someone asked for you related to the Clark sisters. Eric is not related to the Clark sisters. Eric Majette is one of our very well, one of our African American historians that has done so much research on connecting us to our history, so that we're able to have these type of conversations that shed additional light on things. We had a great conversation um, earlier uh, this month about the Madam C.J. Walker. Uh, story. We'll have to bring that to YouTube because he had so many gems about that story that weren't necessarily on point with what we saw on Netflix. But I just love the fact that we're celebrating our history in such a positive way. I did want to ask you, is there is there record of um, uh, uh, one sister doing the deal for the 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 the, the sedan? Like, the oh, yeah, Twinkie. Yeah, that, that is true. Did that's she do that? Did Twinkie do the deal for the car? Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't um the car that they actually talked about. Um there's a picture of it on uh Nisi's son's page. Okay. Um because he he was raised um in Twinkie's household along with his grandmother's household as well. Okay. Um, so but yeah, he actually put the the actual car up there and yeah. told what kind it was. Um so, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot. Um, she did sell her um, her catalog. She was not as um, she, now when she sold her catalog, did she so she sold her catalog that included her sister's songs, correct? Well, they were all her songs. They were all her songs. Okay. Yeah. The Clark sisters were was a combination of in the beginning early Maddie Moss Clark stuff they did, mm -hmm. but Twinkie was the Clark sisters. She wow. was the voice of the, the, the written voice of the Clark sisters. Okay. Everything so they did. Told, you know, that that was hers that she had done, but it, mm -hmm. it included their livelihood as well. I can't say that only because that was her intellectual property. Right. Okay. Nobody else's. So that it was hers to do. Right. You know, do she you was know the writer of the group. Um, uh, one of our listeners asked, do you know who owns their masters now? Yes, um, the same guy that still owns it. Um, she and, and this what was not stated, but Twinkie did get back her catalog just Good. recently. Yay! Okay, I was wondering. Get back her catalog. Was my mother um, going to get it back after she saw it? For yeah, but I think it was after um, after they had finished production for the uh, the, the movie. Okay, okay. But she did get back her catalog. Okay. Um, Sound of Gospel. I can't remember his name at the moment. Um, up in Detroit, he's um, and it's funny because. He was of the uh, ethnic background of the gentleman that they showed on the thing who they called, you know, they had a, a pseudonym for. He was not, he was not a black man. Correct. <laughs> he was a white. Yeah. So um, he still owns the, the Sound of Gospel catalog. He's, wow. um, he's older, a, a lot older and actually is, um, is sickly, but he owns the catalog for them and a lot of the uh, artists that I was speaking of that came out of the Detroit area. Wow. So, uh, oh God, he's, he's going to make a lot of money right now. He has made a lot of money. He's going to make. And I think that was probably one of the reasons why they actually did original music because now the ownership is back in Twinkie's um, hands, um, so they were able to, you know, avoid unnecessarily paying somebody else for the car. Right. So that's another thing I did want to mention is that I know that all the songs that we hear in the movie are have been redone and were done by the cast, correct? Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah, so they, I mean, they were, I wonder who worked with them. To Donald help. Lawrence. You said what? Donald Lawrence. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Talk, you know, a little bit about that to share. I saw yeah. that he was in the press release that they mentioned Donald Lawrence work with them, but that yeah. I mean, they sounded absolutely the musical director and he's worked with them um, and has been a fan. Like he, everybody's grown up on the Clark sisters. Mm -hmm. um, so he was a fan and also um, like just a musical genius. So right. he created the sound or recreated the sound for the movie. Oh and um, man, he brought it. And, and there's a video on 
his page and Christine uh, Swanson, who's the director, who's absolutely phenomenal. He did right. um, uh, on her page, you see uh, after he has coached the group, you know, the girls mm -hmm. um, to actually do, uh, I guess, unveil to the Clark sisters the sound oh. of the cast and the video is phenomenal. And you oh, see their wow. reaction hearing them themselves. Okay. It's, yeah, it, it's really amazing. And that's on his page. That's on, uh, I saw it on Christine's page. On Christine Swanson's page. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, wow. I'm sure it's on Donald's page as well. Wow. Well, that's, that's amazing. And that's, I know that when uh, TLC did their movie with mm -hmm. the one, they did that as well to recreate the sound so that they didn't have to, you know, cause otherwise you end up just giving whoever on the your way. everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do you think is the biggest takeaway in this? I'm, I'm just excited. Like I said, to see something that basically goes back to our roots. We know that no matter how far we get as a culture, we, we gospel is is kind of the soil that birthed the music that we have today that basically is the music that the world is connected to um, there's no one that is a singer that is 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 at any level of especially icon status it hasn't come out of church that has not that has not come from that soil Absolutely. so what other takeaways do you think that we should take from this movie and again congratulations to lifetime and yeah. to the, the amazing women that were a part of this 2.7 million people that's amazing for yeah. an opening night even though we are all stuck home right. <laughs> but yeah, that's that was a story that everybody was interested in anyway you right. know, the icons, literally when it came to crossing over, the uh, the first group to cross over in gospel at the time, in the uh, once contemporary gospel started, was right. um, the actual, um, oh my gosh, I just went blank, uh, Hawkins. The Hawkins, okay. Uh, yeah, with Oh Happy Day. Mm -hmm. So there hadn't been another crossover major, you know, hit um, by that point until the Clark Sisters. And of course you had Tremaine Hawkins as well. Okay. Um, did a major crossover to the uh, pop charts. Mm -hmm. The Clark sisters revolutionized and actually relaxed the Kojic, uh, <laughs> the, so the, a lot of the, um, a lot of the, and this is really serious. Like the, a lot of the, um, things that people take for granted right now in the Kojic tradition, mm -hmm. of the Clark sisters, right? They right. have really relaxed everything. <laughs> Women are able to wear pants now. Mm -hmm. Women are able to be more involved. And um, and it, it, it eased out a lot just because yeah. we literally buried that cross. Yeah. Their mother and them really buried that cross for everybody. Absolutely. Um, the, the women in leadership and everything. Absolutely. absolutely. And the other thing that you said um, that's most important, a lot of people don't know, but I started off first. My, um, my collection literally started off as a gospel collection. So wow. I've been in gospel since I was 12 years old. Right. Um, most people don't know that part. Um, Albertina Walker was my cousin. Mm -hmm. And I grew up around a lot of the legends. Um, I st Like I said, I started at 12. So mm -hmm. I started doing, um, back when the internet, for, oh God, I just dated myself. <laughs> <laughs> but back when the internet came out, I did a lot of their first websites. So um, mm -hmm. Kelly Price, I did her first website back in the day. Um, I did Whitney Houston's mother. I did Whitney Houston's first fan page. And um, just got involved in gospel very early. Sure. Um, Shirley Caesar um, is like my godmother. Like I was introduced to her by a friend of hers in my hometown, Miss Nettie. And from there, I just got involved in gospel. And then from there, it just kind of just metastasized, if you will. Yeah. And um, so I've been, oh God, I've been studying gospel. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that. Forever, yeah, forever. Over, over 20 plus years. Well, Mark says that I love learning more about Jackie and Dorinda who often get overlooked. And I, I did I did as well because you don't hear about Jackie and Dorinda as much as you definitely hear about Clint Karen. Um, I actually didn't know, I had no idea that Twinkie was like the, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was doing everything before. You just, you just don't know that. And then you wonder as a fan, why are you getting so many solo albums and then there's you know the, the the sisters overall but the fact that they were each able to do and be successful in their own right was mm -hmm. um was amazing can you share anything else about uh, maybe jackie or dorinda um that we did not get a chance to see in the film that was they pretty much covered everything not everything went into depth but it went into what they want you to know right um, right a lot of the stuff you can kind of get from um from their music. You know, if you go back to Dorinda's um, um, I'm Still Here album, mm -hmm. you know, that talked about her her testimony where she was gonna run her car off of the, um, into the Detroit River. 
Right. Um, so the scene was kind of altered, I guess, for, you know, the the sake of production. Right. And, um, it wasn't necessarily her about to jump off the bridge. She, was, she said that she was going to drive her car off the bridge. Right. Um, right. So that part, um, that album was very telling and very personal. Mm -hmm. um, for her, and that told a lot of her her um, testimony. Personal testimony. People want to go back. Um, actually, and that's the funny part. You can actually find out a lot more about the ladies um, through their personal projects. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like I'm still here. Album, like I said, that one there. Um, she did a recording. Um, oh my god, I don't remember which one it was, but that was during the time that I was here mm -hmm. in Atlanta. So I went to that recording. I was there for that. Um, and then also Jackie's music. Jackie is um, Jackie is sort of kind of like a, a contemporary uh, type woman, you know, uh, when, when it comes to her personal music. Mm -hmm. And um, she has a different sound when it comes to her music than it is with her um, in, involvement with her sisters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every every lady has their own personality, yeah. individually when it comes to their music, and you can tell, right. Uh, she is actually more contemporary. To be the oldest one, she actually has more contemporary flair than uh, the other sisters. Yeah, sisters. Also. Well, I thank you for joining me. I thank you guys for tuning in um, during the middle of the day today with this uh, edition of Let's Get Crystal Clear. Basically, we just want to celebrate uh, the Clark sisters and what Lifetime was able to achieve with the help of our amazing people. Yeah, put that up there. What is that? Which one is this that? Is another one. This is the Sincerely the Clark sisters. And then behind it, I got this one, which is the one uh, with original. Um, is oh, my wow. name. Clark. Wonderful. Yeah. Awesome. Now tell people how they can follow you because like I said, Eric has an amazing collection. Uh, hopefully we'll be seeing more of these biopics so we can have you come in and kind of give us the behind the scenes mm -hmm. of what was going on behind that. But tell people where they can reach you and where they can find more about some of the collections that you've been able to secure. Okay. Um, well, the um, the main, the overall collection is called the African American Cultural Heritage Collection. Mm -hmm. um, we have a page on Facebook, so that's on Facebook, the AACHC. Mm -hmm. um, also, that's the page on IG, um, the A the AACHC, okay. um, and also I think on Twitter as well. Okay. Um, so that's those, and then my personal handle on IG is um, the Mr. Majestic, the Mr. Majestic. Uh, that's on there. Um, my Facebook is Eric Majet Jr., and then also the page on um, for the collection is on there as well. And okay. uh, for the overall collection, you can go on to BlackHistoryArchives.com, mm -hmm. and that will bring you to the overall collection. Yes, awesome. Malcolm X, uh, Muhammad yeah. Ali. Yeah, everything. <laughs> It goes on and on and on and on. My earliest is the uh, original uh, 15th century map of Africa. And my most contemporary is um, Tupac's first publishing contract. Wow. We definitely got to talk more about that. Okay. Uh, Eric, we're going to end this with your favorite. What is your absolute favorite song from? Oh, God. Why would you do that? <laughs> um, that's hard. Um, oh, man. There was two things. Uh, is My Living in Vain, of course, is one of my favorites. Yeah. But there's a song that Donald Lawrence um, redid, um, Cast Your Cares on Him. Mm -hmm. I did not know that's an original Clark Sister song. I went back and I was listening to it the other day and I was like, wait a second, that sounds real familiar. And I listened, I was like, oh my God, that makes sense. With Donald Lawrence being such a big Clark Sister fan mm -hmm. and producing their stuff and Karen's stuff, her, you know, all the way going back. Um, I realized, I was like, oh my God, I did not know that Twinkie wrote Cast Your Cares on Him. That's your cares on them. I love is one of my favorites too. Yeah, I love is my living in vain, and I think that's a very fitting song for what we're all going through right now. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> you know, God has a plan to work this all out. So wherever you are, again, thank you guys for watching. We know that this is going to all work to our benefit. Go listen to the Clark Sisters. It's definitely brighten your day. Thank you guys for tuning in. This has been Crystal Jordan with my special guest Eric Majette on Let's Get Crystal Clear, and I will see you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.